All right, welcome back. I hope you're having an awesome time so far. Next up, we have two speakers from Ivanhoe, Cambridge. They will be presenting real estate towards a data-centric digital playbook. Please join me in welcoming them to our virtual stage. Thank you, Patrika. I feel the energy in the room. Uh, we will uh, project uh, the slides here. Uh, again, my name is uh, Simon Lozzi. I'm uh, the, the Chief Performance um, and the Finance Officer of uh, Ivanhoe Cambridge. In my role, I oversee portfolio construction, finance, and uh, IT. And I'm very glad we're able to share with you our digital journey um, and the mission we're uh, embarking on at Ivanhoe Cambridge. Uh, first, let's quickly start uh, by who we are. Um, we are a subsidiary of the Caisse de Depot du Québec, where we invest uh, pensioners' uh, money into various asset class. Ivano Cambridge is the real estate arm of the case, and we have more than 60 billion uh, in real estate uh, under management, um, and about 15 billion in the office um, uh, in the office uh, office class. Uh, a big differentiator for us is uh, the way we invest. We invest through funds, uh, co-invest, uh, co uh, joint venture, and direct investment. And you will see later uh, what kind of challenge this brings when we're trying to build a, a digital empire um, uh, and, and get everybody on the, on the same page. So our presentation will be uh, not so much on the technologies, but uh, really on our mission and how I'm using my role to bring everyone together towards uh, um, you know, more data-centric and, uh, and the way we can use technology to, uh, to invest better. Uh, I will also be talking about the culture shift that we are embarking on and uh, my role in, in pushing the teams to make sure that we, uh, we are, again, we, we deliver our, our vision. So on the next page, uh, very quickly, we always talk about the four industrial revolutions. Uh, most of you know them. Uh, I would say we're, you know, we're right now in stage three uh, we talk a lot about the computers, automation, and everything else. And, and I think for the real estate world, we sometimes feel that we're stuck there. Um, it, it's a little bit difficult to accelerate and pass on to uh, stage number four, which is, for me, uh, the cyber physical systems where, where we have a, a very strong data infrastructure. We can uh, use that data to make it talk to us and make it, um, you know, so that we, we become, in our case, a better investor. Um, also, with 60 billion of assets, we now need to break into, you know, towards the 80 billion. So how are we going to do this uh, in a more competitive world? So really, the shift from uh, the, the phase three to four for us is, uh, is a big mission, a big culture change. And let me tell you how we are, uh, are thinking about it at Ivano. So if you go to the next page, I wanted to talk to you about my vision as the CFO and performance officer, uh, really trying to bring everyone together and answering their questions like, why are we doing this? Why are we talking all the time about data, digital, and, and so on? And at the top, what you can see is that we are set one common goal for the entire company. And the common goal is to deliver the best performance, not only about returns, but about the mission for example, uh, our environmental footprint and other, but the, my role as the CFO is to make sure that we all have the eyes on the same performance and make sure that anyone in the organization understands where we're going and if we're achieving these returns and what is their contribution. At the bottom left, you can see uh, the challenge we have in terms of performance. We're managing, as I said, a very heter uh, heterogeneous portfolios, sometimes funds, sometimes partners, sometimes direct. Shareholders' expectations are changing, pivoting all time, uh, trying to get more optimization in terms of our, our asset allocation, adding new ways of measuring returns. And I talk about environmental footprint, for example. All this in a very accelerated cycle. We've seen it with COVID. And uh, the last point is about productivity, automatization, and time to market. Uh, let's not kid ourselves. The uh, investment job is about gathering data, crunching it, and making sure we make it talk. So that's 90% uh, of our job across the organization. So it's important that people use the right, right tool 
and stop spending time on mundane data uh, uh, crunching tasks. So if we can automate that, that's a big goal of mine. In terms of the digital and the enablers, uh, for me, we've been able to, uh, to connect real-time data on the performance of every of our single asset from the connection to providing the intelligence in a very agile decision-making process where we can not only tell our asset manager, but our acquisition team where to look, what to look at, how's the future looking like. The other point is about the, really the culture of the one I see that we call data is becoming our common language. It's been very difficult, but again, everybody's getting on the same page toward the same goal. And they all understand data will be the key in the future. The last one is really to focus on what matters. I, again, I talk about value add. Uh, so don't spend time crunching numbers. Don't spend time entering numbers. There are better ways out there. And I you know, Gadam will talk about the ways we're able to, uh, to automate this. So at the end, it's a vision. Uh, I'd like to tell my team and the entire organization is about the finance of the future. We're not so much about accounting, closing the books, reporting. We're about telling you which assets are doing good, which assets are not doing so good. How is the four year forward looking like? And we're not rolling the numbers you know, once a year. We want this in a continuous, timely fashion so that we can detect early on patterns and action we need to take to optimize our portfolio. So on the next page, um, I wanted to bring it back down to something very simple. And it's sometimes very difficult to understand in our real estate industry, especially with the old technology that we had, where people were building multi-systems and were always building specific system, for example, on the tenant, tenant rent roll or looking in the Argus, where you had systems in various places where to find data. The first thing we did at Ivano five years ago, is we stopped uh, thinking this way. And we said, we're gonna use the best tool, no matter where they, what they have, no matter where they come from. And we said, we're gonna go store this data at the best place in the common fridge. And this is what you see is that our business intelligence at Ivano comes from very curated information that is at the right place in our data warehouse. So that's the first message to the team. If you are trying to build or cook a meal, don't need to go uh, in various fridges and various system, come to my store, we have it, we have one common fridge. At the bottom left, you can see that this is uh, our data warehouse, the fridge organized, large volume of centralized data. And then on the right hand side, uh, this is where we talk about the data lake or our coolers. Uh, we have many of our users that are trying to cross data with uh, financial market information, with uh, other providers such as brokers. So it's okay because with APIs, we're able to connect uh, our data warehouse with those new source of data and able to provide you with the, the little cooler you need on your journey. So this has been like a, kind of the storytelling on our side to bring everyone and, and very comprehend what data and how are we gonna go um, uh, cook some of, uh, of, of this, uh, these nice meals. And with that, I will let uh, Galen, uh, who's um, uh, one of my top uh, partner here in this journey, uh, talk to you about how we train our people to think about um, you know, cell service and, and use, usage of this data. Galen, on to you. So, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Galen Benuna. Uh, really excited uh, to join Simon uh, and, and have the opportunity uh, to share a bit our journey at Ivanhoe Cambridge uh, with this great, uh, great audience. So, really, really excited uh, to join uh, Simon here. So, uh, I work for Simon, uh, uh, responsible of enterprise data management analytics and advanced analytics as well as enterprise data governance this is a very important piece in our strategy uh, so um, a modern data and advanced analytics platform need to be able to properly support and adapt quickly to business requirements as well as allowing responsiveness to market events like covid situation and government rent relief programs are a good example for example where we had to adapt very quickly 
for too long, real estate business was considered so stable and so slow that it didn't require much investment in sophisticated data management and advanced analytics and digital transformation. Generally, like Excel was king. Excel was king. He, he is there, but as a tool for analysis among other tools today, like Power BI and Tableau, and less and less as a core tool for data mashup. Um, in Ivanoe Cambridge context, our strategy consi consisted of moving from mainly human resources intensive silhouette processes, as mentioned by Simon, to a fully automated mode where all core systems are always in sync and where data processing rules and definitions are centralized and easier to implement and update, of course. As we can see in this diagram from right to left, uh, all corporate as well as external data from our core systems and external data providers is integrated, cleaned, and stored in one enterprise data warehouse and or the data lake as, as you did see in previous slide, depending on the nature of the information and the business requirements for mashup. So I'll pass the next slide to Simon to go more in depth from a business perspective on this. Hey, thanks, Yadam. I think this, this slide brings um, what we're trying to achieve as a business, uh, being, uh, being an, a real estate investor. So really from the strategy to the opportunities where we select uh, geographies, the sectors and assets we'll be buying, down to the management where we have uh, uh, our asset manager optimizing those assets. And the last point, optimization of our capital where we, uh, we decide to exit uh, recycle or, or reshift the portfolio. So what, what I want to bring your attention to is that at the bottom, there's truly the backbone of our infrastructure is a one-stop shop for everyone. We call it the IC Invest App Suite. This is a Power BI where most uh, of our people have access to and can really follow in the real life uh, time, they, you know, data, they, they can really see what the performance of Ivano is today, what it will be in the future, and which asset or components are bringing most or less returns. So again, we have a suite of tools that we're using, uh, but there's really one big restaurant, this IC Invest app. In terms of the tools, I won't go through many details, but you can see with the, uh, the, the keys here, uh, one of the, the key key that we have is really being able to collect the data in real time and we build a tool called the digital card where we're able to scrape, be it from a fund manager, from an asset manager that manage an asset directly or from partners, we're able to monitor and gather data from those asset managers to make sure that we always have a fresh view of what's coming and how the assets are performing. So that has been a key sub tools in the suite or in our toolbox to really deliver this vision of the IC Invest app. And again, as we add more and more data, as we go along, because we have the backbone infrastructure, we're able to slice and dice the portfolio and really optimize our, our performance. Uh, maybe, Gadam, I will, uh, I will let mm -hmm. you talk uh, about how we do this uh, in, in more specifics. Sure. So let's, 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 uh, let's take an example. Thank you, Simon. So here is an example to illustrate the power of analytics. And again, thinking simple without like over complicating things. Uh, he, here is the power of analytics and the ability like to extract insights in an organization. So we are be able to achieve, uh, uh, once you are able to, uh, to achieve a certain level of hardening of data processing across different systems, here's what you could do. By standardizing and normalizing key master data like asset, geography, and tenant across different systems, using enterprise data management techniques and tools, and by overlaying multiple data sets like cash flows, rent rolls, vacancy, as well as external market data, using data visualization tools combined with AI algorithms like clustering in this case, in this, in, the, in this illustration, we are able to obtain groupings of assets having in common combination of variables or, or factors. This can go from simple geography to surrounding demographic to tenant categories to capex trends or all these combined. Um, 
This way, we are able to extract unvaluable knowledge and intelligence, as well as identifying correlation between these factors. This would be otherwise very difficult to detect without an algorithm uh, when you go over a certain stage. So, uh, so, so Simon, in the next slide, will share with you uh, like a few implementations of this of this approach. Yeah, very quickly. Uh, thanks, Galen. Um, these are a few examples of correlation optimization. Again, we uh, before we go in the next page of uh, AI machine learning, which I will talk about on, on the next page, uh, real estate people are very uh, sim simple people, I would say, in terms of uh, what they want to see, what they want to understand. So a few examples is that when we look at our uh, pivoting portfolio, it's important for us to see is the pivot really working? As we move from more traditional asset class to new asset class, we're able to break down that portfolio by geographies, by vintage, and really analyze um, the, the return components as well as the future uh, expected uh, re risk return profile of those, uh, those different portfolios. So we're able to slice and dice different ways. Uh, the return by, by factor, uh, we're now doing many regressions, uh, a little bit of AI, trying to understand like with the data that we're adding um, are, for example, lower carbon footprint assets really delivering uh, in the future more returns. Uh, what are the various attributes? But we're able to uh, slice and dice by more than 100 factors and try to detect patterns that are predictive of our future performance. We also did the same, for example, on the residential portfolio where we're getting access to third party migration data and trying to explain the returns or where the demographics will support more returns for uh, our investment. And lastly, in the portfolio construction way, we're always uh, you know, working on optimizing our efficient frontier. And again, we're adding lots of risk metric to be able to, uh, to, to really calibrate on a continuous basis and keep the North Star for us uh, as, we, uh, as we, we aim towards this, uh, this 80 billion. Um, on the next page, I wanted to, uh, to really conclude, um, I would say my message uh, to you is, uh, yes, there's many things we're doing on a technological front. Uh, obviously, we are working in our asset, uh, we, you know, on smart, smart building technology. We're also investing in prop tech with uh, the likes of, uh, of Fifth Wall, uh, our various teams are working about better ways to, uh, to augment their productivity. But I think what's important is to provide the common infrastructure for it, all this data to be added and to be sliced and diced so that everyone can benefit. Uh, so, so really there's no one left behind and all this data has to go to one place. And it's basically in the IC Invest app that we've uh, we, we we constructed over the last uh, the last few months. Uh, we keep adding information. We keep getting more intelligent. So right now, um, the current progress that we've made is again all this data at the same place, very linear regression uh, type analysis. Uh, you know, basic slice and dice looking at the four years ahead, looking backward, trying to find uh, explanatory factor, but in progress today in our store, uh, with uh, the help of Galem, there's a few data scientists that are taking it to the next level. Uh, with some machine learning, we're now working on the algorithms to predict uh, the fair market value of our assets, their evolution over time, uh, many new AI uh, technologies that we're using to really accelerate this. And again, as we have more people joining the infrastructure, and I'm talking, for example, about my, uh, my ESG colleagues that now have lots of data about the carbon footprint, the ranking of our assets. So these will be data that we can cross with our, our, uh, our uh, 100 other factors to make sure we make a talk and take us to the next level in a more predictive way so that we can adjust uh, real life time. So uh, I know there's many, uh, many technologies out there. Many of you are representing them. Um, I think it's super interesting. And, and again, the, you know, trying to see how we can work with each other to, uh, to, to make our data more uh, plentiful and, and make it more predictive in the future.
is, uh, is what we're trying to do at Ivano Cambridge. So I'm looking forward to be exchanging with, uh, with a lot of you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you both. That was awesome. And I know this audience is giving you a huge <laughs> virtual round of applause. <laughs> Awesome job, thank you for sharing with us. For the audience, it's time for you to make your way to your next session. Along the way, make sure you accept your connection request and take some time to check out our amazing exhibits. Thanks so much and we'll see you around.